Hello, my name is Jeff Rabina, and I'm here to show my tiny home slash caravan that I built. It took actually over a year between when I started it and when we moved in. It's 196 square feet, it's 10 feet wide, 19 and a half feet long. When we were designing, we were renting a place that was a little caravan, little caravan, eight by 16. And I knew I wanted 10 feet wide just for the extra utility space. And so because of that, I built it on a skid rather than a trailer frame, because looking at a trailer frame, it was like, uh, like there was one couple who built a caravan here and they ordered this custom one and it was like $3,500 US and they had to go pick it up in Idaho or something like that. We decided to build a skid out of about $150 worth of lumber. It's small so when we moved to the new spot we wanted to have a very big deck which isn't quite done but the deck itself wraps around three sides and is about 240 square feet. There will be a bathtub here um, and it will be covered in this corner. Half will be a seven foot by six foot skylight and then covered in the corner. And eventually I'm planning on building a boardwalk out to the outhouse, which as you can see is not done. Fridge is outside. And then the house is here. Um, so I think a lot of this house, it was kind of inspired by boats probably in the style because it was small and everything is custom. Being tall, I made this kitchen counter two inches taller than what you might normally see. And also it's a little narrow. So I got really creative with all the furniture and stuff like this. Like we did a diner style booth and then the seats slide. We have storage underneath, bookshelf built in the back there, you know, a little shelf, like just shelving, shelving everywhere up above the window keep our preserves here again like this is built to fit this is the piece of furniture we have that i didn't build everything else was yeah kind of built just to fit to be as big as it could did electric heat i didn't wood heat would have been too hot like we have to turn the heater off if we cook in here uh with the with the gas stove like if the oven's on or even if we have a few people like with half a dozen people in here. You can turn the heater off and the body heat will literally heat the house. It's just so small. Our bed space is pretty basic. It's like just enough room basically in the bed to sit down in bed. Little window to open to keep fresh air up here. A lot of this stuff, like all the trim, um, was scrap wood and then this one here and was just extra from the skid that I decided to use to support the loft. Plywood I used for this and this and this, but then this, uh, the fronts of these were scrap wood. We have propane hot water and our heater just uh, broke. And so we're in the process of deciding we want a bigger one because I think we're gonna be having a bathtub before we just had an outdoor shower, but now we want a bathtub. So we want a higher volume one. And also I think we're going to end up putting another sink outside just for garden and utility purposes, you know, wash veggies and wash your hands. This is about the extent of our electricity and a few lights. So in the summer, our hydro bill is about like 10 bucks a month or, or 15 maybe. But in the winter, that thing's like a hundred dollars a month, I think, which is kind of, uh, but it holds heat really well so if we have power out which we didn't even have 24 hour but if we have a power out it's fine propane propane tiny bit of electricity there's I did all the wiring myself because there's like I put it on three circuits but there's like five lights I live in a tiny house because here on Hornby you know the tourist rentals and the summer homes and stuff have not only driven up prices a lot on real estate but also it's so lucrative for people to rent by the week in the summer that finding a year-round rental on Hornby is like really hard 
And I was, Ren and I both were, you know, working in tree planting. We had some money put away and we were like, well, rather than struggling to find a decent living situation, let's, we'll build something. And it, it it's finding a place to rent. Um, so hard finding a place to build or put a caravan or whatever, something portable on Hornby is super easy. There's so many options. So we did that and that, yeah, we've been living in it now for two years. When we moved in, we did a massive purge and I don't get new things unless I really need them. I, I have got rid of so much stuff that I feel like I've really pared down what I own to be only essential stuff. I love living in a tiny home because it's really simple and you, it's really easy to sort of have an awareness, a complete awareness of your sort of realm of accountability or whatever. You have a, you have a very close relationship with everything in your life because you live in a small place. The challenges, it's mine. So a challenge is that there's no one like, oh, that's broken, it's I have to fix it is kind of a challenge. Uh, but I think also just the general, like, uh, when, when we were snowed in, when we had the big snowfall and, you know, our car was stuck in the driveway for like eight days and we're, you kind of get a bit stir crazy. I think Ren and I can kind of, you know, feel like really in each other's space in some days, I think. I, we, we salvage a lot of material and also... I learned so much about things that I do differently. I'm gonna say, make a guess that it cost us somewhere between eleven and twelve thousand dollars to build. Uh, I I have a feeling that with some of what I learned and with some because I did another project actually, someone saw the finished product of this and liked it and hired me to help building a, a juice bar. And some of the ideas I have, I think I could build something of a size to this probably for well, maybe not half but for quite a bit less than than what we built on this yeah i think like and that's including like our stove which you know we shopped around and found this one it's like narrower it's only 20 inches wide it was actually pretty hard to find one a little smaller but those kind of things you kind of are like well for how much of a difference a few inches is gonna make in such a small place. Like some of those things, it was like, it's worth spending more. But uh, the windows were all free. So that was a big saving. Yeah, probably right now we've spent close to, maybe close to $12,000. I would recommend this to people a lot sooner than I would recommend buying property. I think, you know, if you don't have the means to easily save 25% down, it's probably, in my opinion, foolish to buy a house. To do, you know, a high-risk mortgage where you save for four years to put away, you know, $20,000 and then you have a $1,600 a month mortgage for 25 years. That's, I think that's like idiocy in today's world with how unreliable so many things are even whole industries like forestry or kinds of work and stuff so i definitely would recommend building your own place if you have the the skills and the uh and the know-how to do it yourself or to do it cheaply if you have a property you can build on it's to me a lot better of a situation than a rental but it's kind of a nice in between because Finding someone who's willing to have something like this on their land is not very hard. Um, and and so, like right now, we built it. We own it. It's done. So, just having this on someone's place. We pay $125 each month. It makes it that really easy to simplify your life. To go, okay, I don't need very much work. It's, and so now we're here, we can guard and we can grow. And it's like, I, I feel like right now, if I made $1,000 a month, I'm doing pretty good. You know, it's, 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 been, it's been awesome. I mean, that's, of course, we were lucky enough that we went tree planting and one season's tree planting savings was enough to build this place. But I would, I would recommend it and I would recommend it to anybody who just wants to kind of simplify and take control of their life. I think the best thing to do to start building a tiny home or caravan or anything like this is to get your windows 
try and get really good quality windows. You know, having big open windows, you need it so you don't feel com confined. If you look at some of the master caravan builders around Hornby and stuff like Lloyd House and, the, you know, some of the, the windows so that everywhere you everywhere you look you see outside it it opens the place up and that's so important and if you put in the time and the work you can find free windows and good free windows and if you find free windows they're worth designing your home around that's like the thing i learned and the thing i would definitely say to anyone who's interested in this kind of thing also i would say do research of costs, think long term in your planning, try and have the entire thing planned and mapped out before you hammer a single nail. Um, because, you know, if you can, the, the bigger of a lumber order you can do, for example, the more you'll have to work with if, in, in case of needing little this and that. I mean, it's, so I, I think my advice to someone who wanted to get into this would be start collecting stuff and start planning it way before you start building and have it done on paper before you start building. My personal philosophy on life is maybe that the most important thing you have in life is your relationships, including your relationship with yourself. I think we get really, in a lot of ways, for a lot of people, I think it's very easy for people to get up, caught up in tracks where the only kind of currency you look at is like financial currency. And I think that like social or spiritual currency will enrich your life a lot more than money will. And so I think my philosophy on life is kind of to, to, try and be try and and build and maintain as many good relationships as i can and you know the simpler i think the simpler your life is the easier it is to have that healthy relationship with yourself and be aware of what you want and need and when you are, are aware of that with yourself and you're able to help yourself then it becomes very easy and natural for you to extend that into others and to be caring and helpful towards others and that's sort of how you live a life that is is rich i think in is is by having good relationships all around you and i think that's probably what i would say is like my my sort of philosophy on life relationships are are the the best most fulfilling thing you can have work on them <laughs> awesome. do it if you're interested in building a tiny home look into it look at and see some of the stuff i mean there are so many resources for you to just look whether it's pinterest or or reddit or 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 online or the west coast builders books or whatever you can look at so much and see so many styles of uh of um of building that can be done for quite quite cheaply as well and you know a, a, the, a neat thing about building a tiny home too is that it gives you the the opportunity to kind of try some stuff that maybe like like for example oh i want to do some japanese style nail free joinery or something like that you know having those kind of features in a, in a house is is a lot more you know the structural integrity is a lot harder to sort of build you need to but a tiny home it's it's kind of forgiving so you can be a little wacky with it and i think you can just kind of try oh, i want this and you can do it and it's it's a little safer than than you know kind of screwing up building like a, a 2400 square foot house or something <laughs> yeah.